Hi everybody, it is my pleasure to share with you the report writing guidelines for Experiment 6, Standing Waves. The learning outcomes of this experiment are, firstly, to investigate standing waves formed in a stress string, and secondly, to determine the mass per unit land of the string. A warm reminder, you must write your own lab report. You are not allowed to copy your peers' experiment report. Any doubts found in the originality of your experiment report are against the scoring rubrics, as no plagiarism is allowed. Observations Roman 1 Data Tabulation Record the readings measured in a suitable table. Make sure all the column headers are labelled properly with physical symbols and units. Don't forget to include the sensitivity of the measuring tool used to measure the land L in the column header. The number of decimal places for primary data recorded must follow the sensitivity of the instrument used. The number of decimal places for secondary data calculated are rounded off to consistently two or three decimal places. Roman 2. Calculation of centroid point. Show the calculation of average T and average L square. In general, the centroid point is written as average X and average Y. We are plotting graph of T against L square. Therefore, the centroid point of this experiment is written as the average L square and average T. The centroid point obtained for this experiment is 1.09 times 10 power negative 1 meter square and 3.43 times 10 power negative 1 newtons. Remember to mark the centroid point on the graph of T against L square, then circle it to differentiate the centroid point from other data points. Roman 3. Plot graph of T against L square. The title of the graph is written. The y-axis and x-axis are labelled with units in brackets. Use appropriate scales for both x and y-axis. For example, in a multiple of 1, multiple of 2, or multiple of 5, or multiples of 10, so that the central point and data points can be marked on the graph easily with our naked eyes without relying on the calculator. Central point and all data points are marked correctly on the graph. A balanced best straight line is drawn through the central point and as many data points as possible. The size of the graph is at least 50% of the graph paper. The sides x and y of the triangle of gradient are at least 8 cm long. How to draw a balanced best fit line? Place your 30 cm ruler in between the data points. The straight line must pass through the centroid point and as many data points as possible. Step 2. Adjust your ruler to get a balanced best fit line if there are points deviated from the straight line. The deviated points on the left and right side of the graph must of equivalent perpendicular distance from the straight line below the centroid point. Based on the graph, the deviated perpendicular distance of data point 1 on the right side is almost the same as the deviated perpendicular distance of data point 2 on the left side. In other words, below the centroid point, data point 1 has balanced the data point 2. Step 3. Same thing goes to the deviated points above the centroid point. Based on the graph, the deviated perpendicular distance of data point 3 on the right side 
is almost the same as the deviated perpendicular distance of data point 4 on the left side. In other words, above the centroid point, data point 3 has balanced the data point 4. This is how we get the balanced best fit line. Roman 4. Determine the gradient of the graph. The gradient of the graph is determined using the formula of m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. For the operation of addition and subtraction, the number of decimal places of the x and y entries must be consistent. How many decimal places shall we consider for the x and y values? It depends on half of the smallest division of the scale used for both x and y axes. What does it mean by half of the smallest division? Based on the graph plotted in previous slide for the y axis, half of the smallest division is determined by multiplying half with the smallest division of y axis. Based on the diagram on the right hand side, there are 10 divisions between 0 and 1. Therefore, the value for one division is 1 over 10. By multiplying half with 1 over 10, we will get 0 0.05. This means that the y entries of the gradient can read up to two decimal places. Same goes to the x-axis. Half of the smallest division is determined by multiplying half with the smallest division of x axis. Based on the diagram on the right hand side, there are 10 divisions between 0 and 0 0.2. Therefore, the value for one division is 0 0.2 divided by 10. By multiplying half with 0 0.2 over 10, we will get 0 0.01. This means that the x entries of the gradient can also read up to two decimal places. The gradient of the graph is obtained by substituting the values of y2, y1, x2, and x1 into the formula. All the x and y entries consist of two decimal places. At the same time, don't forget to include the prefix of the y and x axis in the calculation. To calculate for the value of gradient, the y entries will be divided by the x entries. For the operation of multiplication and division, the least number of significant figures of the x and y entries is considered and reflected in the calculated value of gradient m obtained. Among the x and y entries, the least number of significant figures is 2, but 2 is 2 less, can be allowed to add one more significant figure to become three significant figures. Therefore, the value of m is rounded off, becoming 3.39 newtons per meter. Romans 6. Determine the uncertainty of the gradient del m by using the Excel worksheet. Step 1. Fill in the column x with the values of t. Step 2. Fill in the value of gradient m obtained from the graph. Step 3. Fill in the column y with the values of l squared. Then press enter. Step 4. The del m calculated by the Excel worksheet will be displayed in the blue box. Please record it down in your jotter. Please round off the value of del m to the same number of decimal places as the m obtained. Therefore, the result of m plus minus del m obtained is 3.39 plus minus 0.34 newtons per meter square. Both the values of m and del m consist of two decimal places. Romans 7. Determine the mass per unit length of the string. From the equation 6.3, the tension in the string is given by t equals 4 mu f square L square. By comparing it with the linear equation y equals mx plus c, 
the formula of the gradient is obtained as m equals 4 mu f square. Rearrange the formula, therefore, the mass per unit length in the string is given by mu equals m over 4 f square. By substituting the value of m and f into the formula, the value of mu obtained is 3.39 times 10 to the power negative 4 kg per meter. Roman 8. Determine the uncertainty of the mass per unit length of the string. The formula of the mass per unit length of the string is given as mu equals m over 4f square, where 4 is a constant value and f, 50 hertz, is a given value. Based on the combination of uncertainties, the formula of del mu obtained is del mu equals del m over m times mu. By substituting the value of del m, m and mu into the formula, the value of del mu obtained is 0 0.34 times 10 to the power negative 4 kg per meter. Roman 9. The result obtained for mu plus minus del mu is 3.4 plus minus 0 0.3 times 10 to the power negative 4 kg per meter. Experimental uncertainties should be rounded off to one significant figure. Always round the experimental result to the same number of decimal places as the uncertainty. Roman 10. Calculate the percentage of uncertainty. The percentage of uncertainty is calculated by using the formula of del mu over mu times 100%. By substituting the value of del mu and mu into the formula, the percentage of uncertainty obtained is 8.8% which is less than 15%, which means the result obtained for mu plus minus del mu is acceptable. Discussion Roman 1. State the results obtained in the form of mu plus minus del mu kg per meter and the percentage of uncertainty. Roman 2. State the possible errors occurred in the experiment and elaborate. Roman 3. State the precaution steps taken in the experiment. Last but not the least, the conclusion. State whether the learning outcomes or the objectives of this experiment could be determined by the experiment. That's the end of this session. Thank you for joining me and have a nice day to you.